How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel where it's okay to be pirating. Today's video is one that I've been looking forward to because we're covering some more game lore. I've watched tons of videos and even read multiple story articles on the story behind Sea of Thieves. Which by the way, me and Isaiah did play a while back and we actually had a pretty good time on it. So with all that said, let's get right into this video. We begin in the era of the ancients, long before the pirates and the Sea of Thieves came to be. The ancients were the civilization that inhabited the sea that was covered by this very thick and dangerous fog known as the Devil's Shroud. Because of this mist, the enveloped sea had a very strong magical component to it which the ancients later found and studied. Using squid ink, they managed to see beyond the shroud and potentially even into the future, as well as learning and controlling certain magical curses that they set. However, these ancients weren't alone. At the time, there were also sea creatures known as merfolk who resided in the actual ocean. And these Merfolk weren't hostile in any way, they actually formed an alliance with the ancients. They managed to live peacefully together until Old Mother, great name, the largest kraken to roam the world, has waged war with the Merfolk due to a promise their sea queen broke. That promise was the forbidding of the interracial love between Merfolk and ancient. It caused the sea queen to lose her song, which was what made them communicate peacefully, and turned her and her ancient warrior lover into sirens. Sirens were also capable of infecting other Merfolk, so so the merfolk saw this as a plague being brought upon them and banished the sirens from their community. On the other hand, Old Mother was devouring merfolk time and time again, which eventually led to the ancients stepping in to chain Old Mother to the bottom of the ocean. To make sure no escape was possible, they placed a curse on the chain so they would never break or rust, and after time had passed, Old Mother had perished. But there was still the issue of the sirens. The siren king tried to amend their relationship with the ancients, but they were violent and bound his soul to the chest of the eternal sorrow. As you'd guess, the Siren Queen wasn't too happy and started binding the ancient souls to statues underwater. Fair play at its finest. Eventually, an ancient warrior managed to seal the sirens into the Shrine of Ancient Tears, which would have finally allowed the ancients and merfolk to live in peace, but it's never that easy. Within the ancients' community, the priests were discovering this new realm where the dead resided. The royal court, fearing the worst, decided to have the ancients journey into the realm to try and establish a connection between the living and the dead. But after venturing into the realm of the dead, they were never seen again. Like, why would you willingly take your whole civilization into purgatory? Purgatory. Anyways, this led us to the next chapter of the story, the Era of the Pirates. It's here we see the pirate lord Ramsay and his crew Mercia, Shan, and Rathbone first venture into the Devil's Shroud and make it into the Sea of Thieves. When they first arrived, they found wall art and remains of the ancients, and of course, stuff that they could steal. After mapping their passage through the Shroud, they decided to head back and tell people about their journey and what they've seen. Of course, nobody believed them, but Rathbone was a snake. He gave a copy of the map to someone named Jim, who then sold it to other pirates for coins. So much for the secret passageway. This then led to many fleets sailing into what was dubbed the Sea of Thieves. Pirates alike battled each other to find any loot and treasure that they could get their hands on. Ramsey and the crew went back and set up their own little hideout known as the Thieves' Haven. It was there that they stored their loot and studied the properties of the sea. Shan managed to make the cannons and Mercia documented the magical components she discovered. Then suddenly, the hideout was ransacked, which unknowingly was part of Rathbone's plan. When Ramsey noticed the pirate battling was getting out of hand, he called a meeting to try and settle it once and for all. He used magic to chain some chests shut and held the keys for them in his possession. During this meeting, a kraken attacked, and Rathbone used this as an opportunity to betray the crew and take the keys from Ramsey. He then went on to found the Gold Orders Alliance, where people go and find Ramses and others' treasures and bring them back to him in exchange for a cut. The Gold Hoarders were actually the ones who also helped the Merchant Alliance and Order of Souls form. When the Kraken was defeated and Rathbone made his escape, another pirate known as Captain Flameheart made his distaste for Ramses' plans of peace known. This began the Flameheart's Reign of Terror. Flameheart led the Skeleton Army and created the Ashen Lords Old Horatio, Red Ruth, Captain Grimm, and War. Gordon Chi. While Flameheart was ferocious and was definitely feared, he eventually went into hiding after some time. He bound his soul to his skull and was put into the secret chamber in the Flaming Peninsula. Meanwhile, we go back to what Rathbone, the traitor, has been up to. After forming the Gold Hoarders, he heard tales of the Shores of Gold, an island covered with the gold left by the ancients. 
He sailed to it and attempted to take it back with him, but was met with retaliation from old crewmate Mercia and captain of the Morning Star, Slate. His ship sank, and as he fell further down into the deep, all he saw was his loot and trying to take it with him. His greed turned him into the Gold Hoarder's Skeleton Lord, and of course the story would have ended there, but one key detail unknown to all at the time was Flameheart Jr.'s journey. Flameheart adopted a child and taught him all that he could before leaving. Flameheart Jr. met the old captain of his father's old crew. It was there that Flameheart Jr. fell to the same curse and set out to make a reputation for himself and rule the Sea of Thieves. However, at this time, Ramsey was ready to retire. He had mysteriously died after announcing to the Gold Hoarder he was ready to leave it all behind. He left behind a legacy. Though it may not have been one many liked, it was still there and told in stories. However, his ghost still lies in the Sea of Thieves and roams freely. And with that, we've covered the entire main story for Sea of Thieves. I've gotta say, out of all the lore videos I've done so far, this one might be my favorite. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything or got anything wrong, and leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. If you want to see more game lore, check out this video on the lore of Terraria. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys next time.